Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to Fiqh Sira, a deeper understanding of the Prophet's life, with your host, Abdul Rahim Riyasat. This podcast is about analyzing the Sira with the intention of contextualizing its events and drawing practical lessons from them. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. At Seekers Guidance, we believe in keeping reliable Islamic knowledge free and accessible for all those who seek it. You can help us keep all our content and services free and also earn the rewards of an ongoing and worthwhile charity by making a small pledge at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. Even $10 a month will go a long way in helping us produce content and services and keeping them accessible to everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana wa Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allamtina inna ka anta al-alim al-hakim <coughs> Allahumma alimna ma yinfa'una wa anfa'na bima tu'allimuna wa zidna min fadlik ilman wa amalan al-qurban ya rabbal alameen okay, Bismillah So <coughs> we'll, we'll start by looking at Sayyidina Ibrahim and I just want to focus on a few things on the life of uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim before going straight to uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We won't look at much of the interim period. <coughs> this is because Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam <coughs> was the father of Ismail and Ishaq. Through Ishaq uh, we had uh, the line of the Jews that went through uh, Ya'qub and his 12 sons so Ya'qub one of his names was Israel right which in Hebrew uh, means Isr is close to the word Asr uh, in Arabic which means to be a prisoner uh, Asr is imprisonment so <coughs> Il is their version of Allah so his name literally means the prisoner of Allah or you could say the slave of Allah Abdullah right the servant of Allah <coughs> and <coughs> his twelve sons, you know, from the, their descendants came the twelve tribes of Israel, which, you know, and it was an embodiment of, you know, one of the main world religions, <coughs> you know, Judaism came through there. What we believe is originally it was Islam, but it was uh, uh, distorted. And obviously, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam came from that line. And from the line of Ishaq came, <coughs> sorry, from the line of Ismail came the Arabs and the Arabian Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Ibrahim alayhi salam <coughs> had many many prophets tracing their lineage back to him, and many people with pride, uh, you know, claiming to be his followers. Um, such was his impact, and even in the Arabian Peninsula. <coughs> there was the remnants of his uh, teaching, his religion, right? Uh, they followed Al Millatul Ibrahimiyyah. They followed the Abrahamic way. And although the Arabs had distorted it, um, there were remnants of it. And part of this is Hajj and the rites of Hajj. You know, the acts of worship that are done uh, during the Hajj. They all traced themselves back to Ibrahim. Uh, <coughs> and we won't look at his life in detail, but just a few snapshots. And <coughs> in after the trial, you know, uh, as a child, um, you know, his people tried to burn him. He left. Um, th- the first thing that uh, that comes to mind is uh, the statement of. Um, the statement regarding <coughs> his lies, right? Quote unquote lies. As we know, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that prophets um, do not lie. And so we have certain statements. We have the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Lam yakrib Ibrahim al Nabiyu alayhi salam qattu illa thalatha kazbat. <coughs> Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam never lied. And then this illa, if you were to translate it directly, it would be except for three quote unquote lies, right? Um, in Arabic, the, the word illa except um, has 
has a, has a couple of different nuances and meanings. One of them is there's none of this except for this, right? <coughs> but the meaning here is he didn't lie at all. However, there were three quote unquote lies, right? So <coughs> he's not saying he never lied except on three occasions, he's saying he didn't lie ever. However, there were three, right? Al Istathna Al Munqati is called. <coughs> so uh, what were these lies? So the first one um is uh, obviously his people said to him, you know, they were having a festival and he wanted to show that, you know, the, the worship of the idols was wrong. He's going to smash all the idols. They said, you want to come? He said, inni saqeen. Right? I'm sick. Right? And this translates directly to how it is in English. Like, you could say, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of you doing it. I'm, I'm sick. Right? And, you know, so it wasn't a lie. It, what, what the ulama say is, <coughs> this is, um, it was misdirection. Right? It's called a tawriya in, in, in Arabic. Where you can either instead of lying, you may you say something to make the uh, to make the listener think that you're saying something else. In the fil in in the fil in the fil tawriya madhuhatun anil kadib. There's a way out from lying in tawriya. An example of this is when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will see, <coughs> inshaAllah. Um, uh, just before the Battle of Badr, he was with Abu Bakr. Um, no, actually, it was on the Hijra. He was, he was on the Hijra. Uh, he was with Abu Bakr, and <coughs> there was an old man, Bedouin, and you know he wanted to know. They wanted to know some information, and he said, uh, "If you t- tell me who you are," they said, "If you tell us, we'll tell you." Right. So, he, so. Identity to the Arabs, <coughs> you know, it doesn't matter if you're Zaid ibn, you know, uh, Yahya. It doesn't matter. Right? What they wanted to know, where was your tribe? Right? So he was. He wanted to know f- f- which tribe are you from? Right? So you know, he told them, and then the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nahnu min ma, right? Ma meaning water, right? So you know. <laughs> So there's a tribe in Iraq called Ma, and I think there might have been a few other tribes. So he, you know, the Prophet said, "We are from water," and that man started asking, "Which Ma? The Ma from Iraq or the Ma from here? Which 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 tribe of Ma?" Whereas you know, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ. Allah said, "We made from water uh, every living thing." <laughs> right? So, you know, there was no lie, but it was a misdirection. So, the same with Ibrahim here, in his Saqeem. And, <coughs> and then the second time was when they asked him, who, uh, who killed, uh, who, who, who smashed the idols? And they say he pointed towards them, and uh, he said, that, uh, um, right? that, you know, the big one, this one, did it, right? Intending, uh, so what I was saying, intending his thumb, because your thumb, you know, it's, it's a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have thumbs. Without your thumb, you know, most of the things you can do with your hand, you can't do, right? Try writing without a thumb, right? So, it's that which gives control. So, so metaphorically, you can ascribe the action to the most important element of, uh, of something. So, you could say, for, for example, um, uh, Alexander the Great conquered most of the known world, right? Whereas, did Alexander do much fighting? I don't know, right? But I doubt that he alone set off on his on his horse <coughs> with a shield, spear, and sword, and con- you know conquered the world. Rather, we're talking about his army. But because he was a general, he was uh, you know the man in uh, in charge. It's ascribed to him. So the same thing. And then the third situation was with <coughs> Sarah. And some of the ulama says Sarah was his uh, was a relative, you know, it's his first cousin, and um, she also believed. And they left their hometown of Ur um, <coughs> and came down to uh, modern day Hebron uh, and settled there. But on, uh, he was a messenger of Allah, and he, you know he, he's quite active in his efforts, as we know that Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, when he's in prison, he's talking about you know his forefathers, 
Yaqub and Ishaq and Ibrahim and this is in Egypt and you know it seems like you know his his his, his great grandfather was known you know <coughs> was known for his uh, religious teaching there. So he went to Egypt and Sarah uh, Sarah must have been a, an exceptionally beautiful woman. Uh, someone saw her and he went to the ruler there and he said that you know I've seen a woman and she's not worthy of anyone but you. So then uh, he had uh, Ibrahim called and he said, "Who's she?" And so Ibrahim said that you know she's my she's my sister, intending she's my sister in Islam, right? And uh, this is a perfectly true statement, but once again misdirection. So what we have is this understanding that you know Ibrahim as a believer, you know he he you know he chose. <coughs> he chose a path where, <coughs> you know, he understood the world around him, and you know he didn't he didn't lie directly. In some situations, such as to protect someone's life, you know, of course you can lie, you know, if, if there's a tyrant or whatever. But he he chose a way which, uh, you know, kept him away from you know lying. Because as we know from the Prophet sallam, lying leads to food, to bad deeds, and bad deeds lead to hell. Right, so that's what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described him as a Siddiq, right? You know, kind of Siddiq and Nabiya. You know, Siddiq being a very emphatic way of, you know, saying someone who's very, very, very truthful. So <clears throat> that's one interesting thing about him, and this the, the whole thing about prophets not lying, not not committing sins. <coughs> the next thing, <coughs> which is very interesting, is that Ibrahim, obviously living in a time. <coughs> A long time ago, you know, you are remembered. You are remembered by your offspring through your offspring. And Ibrahim, you know, as a messenger of Allah, teaching for, you know, preaching for a long time, long time, hadn't didn't have any children. And you know, most human beings feel a need to have children, right? You know, it is an emotional need to give love, you know, to, you know. It's 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 something quite normal, and it's only it's, it's only a modern phenomenon where people, you know, they want that lifestyle, right? They want the detached house in that suburb, with that particular car <laughs> on the drive, and in order to do that, you know, both couples have to work just for that life. There's, you know, there's no issue with with both couples working, but if it's you know just for that lifestyle and having that lifestyle means they can't have children then you know it, it's an act of selfishness you know putting your uh, putting yourself <laughs> yourself before the, you know but anyway everyone's different and <clears throat> so you know there's a desire you know he wanted to have children <coughs> in which you know there's, there's a lesson you know at which point did he have Ismail uh, we know from Sahih al-Bukhari he, 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 Ismail his firstborn was uh, was born when he was 86 years old and there's a huge lesson in this and you can imagine him having you know prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and asked and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his wife right Sarah asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for years decades right decades and you know, uh, and, and in this, you know, there is a huge, there's a, there's a huge lesson that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does answer our prayers. But there's, if there's a delay, it's because of something, you know, uh, something wise that He knows that He's decided. And so it's not a delay just for the. It's not arbitrary. You know, there's always a, a deep-seated wisdom. You know. And, so, and sometimes what you get is is actually saved until the akhirah, or something, you know, equally <coughs> <coughs> something worse, you know, something bad that would have happened is is deflected. So, you know, but but the important thing is is that you know he 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 stayed right. Like there's a there's a good metaphor Arabs like to use, you know, waqaftu um, al uh, atabi Right, you know, I stood on the on the doorstep, you know. So he, he stayed there on the proverbial doorstep uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking and asking, you know. And there's no loss of confidence, there's no loss of hope, right? We, which is really something really inspiring, right, you know. 
and you know subhanallah subhanallah so he had his child uh, ismail at the age of 86 and there is <coughs> you know there is this uh, some d- difference of opinion. The majority of the scholars of Islam say this Ismail, and that's what the Quran indicates that Ismail was the firstborn, and Ismail was the child <coughs> who was to be sacrificed. Uh, many of the many of the Jewish scholars um, historically have tried to argue that it's Ishaq um, in order, you know, to, to show that the, the virtue goes. <coughs> goes goes through Ishaq uh, down to them, but um, uh, you know th- there's a lot of evidence to, to especially in our, in our tradition to show that it was Ismail, and I mean <coughs> one of the greatest things is uh, is that uh, uh, Ismail, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says when he's talking about the child that was to be sacrificed, he said, uh, bi halim," and we gave him the good news of a halim. A child, a young boy who's going to be Halim. Hilm is Sayyidul Akhlaq, as they say. Hilm is the best, it's, a, it's the chief of all uh, good qualities, good character traits. Why? Right? It's the ability <coughs> to maintain your composure and not get angry, um, you know, you know, not, not to get exacerbated really quickly. And it, it it's the last thing you acquire. Of, of good quality. Some people might have it naturally, but if you're out there trying to acquire good qualities, usually it's the last thing because you've got to have a lot of things under control: ego, you know, anger, you know, the desire to vent, and, you know, lash out. All of these things have to be managed in order for him to to properly appear. <coughs> and this would naturally be the case, um, and obviously sabr would also be there. And it's it's naturally the, the response of the child who says, "Ya abati alma tukmar, satajiduni, insha Allah min al sabirin." Oh my dear father, it was when he asks him, you know, I need to sacrifice you, right? You know, do what you've been told to do, right? You will, inshallah, God willing, find me of the patient, to be of the patient. So it indicates that it was Ismail. And then later in the verses in Safat, Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, after the discussion on the sacrifice and, you know, the, the ransom that was given, you know, the, 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 the ram that was sacrificed instead of the child, <coughs> Allah says, and we gave him the good news of Ishaq. So it was like as a reward on top of this, um, <clears throat> and then obviously the uh, the fact that uh, Abdullah was almost sacrificed, uh, slaughtered as well, uh, and the Prophet saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know he's a child of two two people who almost got sacrificed. Um, so so this is it, you know the, the whole thing about the test from <clears throat> uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ashadu nasi bala an al anbiya. The people that have the most difficult tests are the prophets. Fal amthalu fal amthal, and those who resemble them the most, then those who resemble them the most, and that's how the the system continues. So, <coughs> imagine this: <coughs> eighty-six year old, and then you've had a child. Falamma balaga ma'hu sa'ya, and when he reaches sa'i, sa'i is a, bit, a quick, like a quick jog, a slight run, meaning. When the child got to a, a stage where he could keep up with his father in daily activities, early manhood, right? <clears throat> Before that, a child is, you know, needs attention, needs to be looked after. But at that point, he can now look after the father. He can start, you know, that's where the father starts benefiting from the presence of a child. <coughs> Excuse me. He's shown this dream, and as we know from the narration of Imam Hakim, that. Um, the, the dreams of prophets are revelation. So he's shown this dream, and it seems that the test was would he go through the process, not go kill your son. You know, so the dream indicated he needs to do this. Would he then do this? And this is this is really interesting, right? That you know, sometimes you're tested with uh, not being given what you want. <coughs> and there's wisdom in that. Sometimes. The test is, is you're given what you want, right? And, you know, so, so you know, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab said, Ubtilina bil darra'i fa sabarna. We were tested with uh, difficulty and we were patient. Ubtilina bil sarra'i fa lam nasbir. And we were tested with ease and we weren't patient. 
So the second use of patience here is, is metaphorical, meaning we weren't grateful. So I'm sure he was a very grateful man, but he's just saying that we, <coughs> you, you know, they were unable to fulfill the, the due of the thanks that was uh, necessary at that stage. <coughs> so, <coughs> so at that point, imagine, imagine, you know, it, it, he's tested with not having a child, then he's been given a child, and then, uh, and then subhanAllah, uh, subhanAllah, uh, he's, he's tested with having to take the child away and leave him in uh, in Mecca, which is a test, you know, um, you know, so if we look at that, inshaAllah ta'ala. And and now you know sacrifice your son uh, is a test of devotion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and you know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala did not want him to kill Ismail but you know what would you put first right and you know Subhanallah you know it's it is telling that he got this he got this test uh, directly and it's not in in in. <laughs> <laughs> in the Sharia, your, you know, your, the first son you have when he reaches 14 years old, you've got to go sacrifice him. You know, it's not for everyone because not everyone could do this, right? And, you know, the Ulama mentioned that this is how he got the khulla, the state of being the khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the intimate, close uh, friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so, you know, so, so this is why, this is uh, one of the things that. Sometimes we're tested, and you know we don't see, you know, the wisdom, and you know a person's pushed to his very limit, and everyone has their own limits, and the limits of the prophets are the highest limits, and you're pushed to the very limit, and yet in those moments of pain, in those moments, you know, of, you know, uh, desperation at times, you know. A person finds that you know a door to getting closer, closer to Allah, you know, and you know, Subhanallah, <coughs> you know, what do most of the, <laughs> what do the angels say? You know, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, enter paradise, you know, because of you know of, of of the patience that you had. So a person can be pushed right up onto the limit, and in reality, he might not realize this, but what he's doing, what he's experiencing is an act which is tremendously beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's worship in these moments, <coughs> it's worship when everything's crumbling around you, it's worship in these situations where you have nowhere to go to but to Allah and sometimes, you know, the response does not come straight away, it's worship in these moments which is superior to the worship of the angels. Who, you know, they said about Adam, are you going to put someone on earth who's going to shed blood, a lot of blood, and whilst we are constantly praising you and declaring your perfection, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you don't know, right? And <clears throat> this is it, right? So Ibrahim, you know, being tested right to the very limit <coughs> of, of his capacity. And you know, to the point where he said to Ismail, "Falamma aslama," when they both surrendered, "What Allah will jabin?" And he said, "Turn him over." Ismail, you know, asked him, "You turn me on my um, on, on my stomach, so he's going to sacrifice his throat, cut his throat from underneath." You know, because <coughs> lest the human emotion over overwhelm him <laughs> as he's trying to, you know, <coughs> do the command that was specifically given. And this was, you know, the act of total, uh, you know, of absolute devotion to him. Uh, you know, subhanAllah. And, you know, and we see, we see that, you know, the benefit of good company as well. That <coughs> um, Hajar, right, and, sorry, yeah, yes, uh, Hajar was the mother of uh, Ismail. Uh, Sarah was the mother of Ishaq. So, so Hajar, you know, she had the child and... He's, he's commanded go take go take him to uh, go go take them both to to this valley in Mecca. Ghairi vi zara is described as absolutely barren and there's no chance of anything growing there at all. So they are taken there and we see in her time with Ibrahim she obviously cause she was a Copt, I mean she was originally a Egyptian, but she accepted Islam and and her company with. 
uh, uh, Sarah and her company with Ibrahim had a profound effect on her. And what was that profound effect? He took her there, he left them there with some food and uh, did some water, and he turned, he was commanded to turn and, and leave. And you know, once again, imagine the test on, uh, that this great, great man had to endure at this point. And you know, she starts saying, Ibrahim, why are you leaving us here? You know, <coughs> and then she, she repeated it and she said, Has Allah told you to do this? And he said, Yes. And she said, Okay, then he won't let us perish. Right? So, meaning, she's, she's from her time with. Ibrahim, she's imbibed not only Iman, but she's imbibed the high qualities of Iman, of tawakkul, and reliance, and having a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah's told him <coughs> to put her there <coughs> and uh, and go. Okay, in our lives, we might not find the same, you know, exact same scenario, but you know, we are tested with things, you know. For example, for someone, it might be, how am I going to pay the next bill, you know? And, you know, Allah's guaranteed our risk. So, you know, it usually it, um, it appears at the last minute. I had a friend and he told me that, um, he felt, um, he told me that at one point he was tested financially a lot. And, <coughs> you know, he went and, He's, you know, he, he tried getting by for a long time, not asking anyone, not mentioning anything. A lot of self-respect he has. And he got to a point where he was just about to collapse. Like, you know, he, he needed the money for, you know, whatever. And he sat there, a friend of his invited him for a meal. <coughs> and he sat there <coughs> and he eventually decided, okay, I'm going to ask him money. I'm going to tell him I've got this difficulty, I've got that difficulty. I'm going to ask him for money. And just at that moment, you know, when you know, had he just hung on a little bit more. But anyway, he said, I, I brought the topic up and I said, look, I'm really struggling. Can you help me out? And, you know, subhanAllah, his friend said to him that, you know, I was actually just going to offer you some money before you said that. You know, you didn't even need to ask. I was going to offer it for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had provided him the means. And it was just a case of, can he hang on? Right? And he felt that, you know, this is my limit. And, you know, you know alhamdulillah. So this was it. And then, uh, once again, we see an act of desperation from Hajar. You know, the, the, the water's run out. <clears throat> she needs to drink if she's going to breastfeed her child. And no one in sight. So she climbs the hill, Safa. She looks toward the Kaaba. Is her son alright? He's, he's under a little bush. Uh, <coughs> and then she runs, you know, she walks and she runs. Uh, she walks towards Marwa, the other valley, and the other other, <coughs> other hill. Now it's obviously it's just, you know, pretty much flat. It just goes down a slight descent. But in the past there, was a, it was, there were big hills and there was a valley. And so the the point where the, the green marks are the green lights now where you jog the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is to jog <coughs> are, the, are those points you know, she ran at that point because at that point Ismail was not visible and then when she got past that point she saw him again calmed down she slowed down she went to Marwa and she repeated this seven times and an act of you know desperation but you know, she could have refused and said, no, I'm coming back with you. How could you leave me here? You know, she could have said something like this. But, the, you know, that standard was slightly different as well. Just to know that, you know, Ibrahim is not an any old person. He's, he's a messenger of, of Allah. And, you know, people that are close to him, you know, may be, may be tested in, you know, in, in, with, with, you know, strong tests, you know, difficult tests because of their connection to him. And but just having the confidence that he is the messenger, and Allah's on his high, on his side, and therefore consequently Allah's on her side. And you know she didn't she didn't go after him and no you can't leave I'm going to follow you back I don't care where you'll have to look after you know there's none of this it's like okay so she's there but the human you know they're all humans so so she felt this emotion that 
oh my god my child what's going to happen <coughs> and she did it and to the point that she heard the sound and she said you know um, you, you've made yourself heard right if you got any sort of help you can offer please do right and you know in Sahih al-Bukhari narration and it was Jibreel and <coughs> he struck his wing or his foot uh, and, and water started coming out which is where the spring of Zamzam came now what I'm saying is the same thing in, in difficulties that sometimes like I said you're pushed uh, you're tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know you're pushed to the very limit of what you can handle and <coughs> you know yet at this this moment it's you know the obedience and worship in that in, in that moment and what was her worship her worship was you know her, the trust that she, that she placed in Allah it's it's so valuable at that moment that it's extremely dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so <coughs> that the entire hajj <laughs> one of the main pillars of Islam right is based on 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 these actions Right, the actions of Ibrahim, you know, the stoning of the of the devil who's trying to di- dissuade him, um, the actions of Hajar, right, you know, the the sa'i and Saf in Safa Marad, the, the sacrifice as well of Ibrahim. <coughs> it's something tremendous, right? So much so that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself imitated their actions. You know, he 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 walked at a quicker pace <coughs> between the two the uh, in in the valley so between where the green lights are now between Safa and Marwa so it's it's really significant that, that you know uh, it's a contextual understanding and it's not just she was there and she ran back and forward and then Jibril came and you know saved them and they had water to drink you know it's it's people that you know they were human they felt they felt pain, they felt fear, they felt anxiety, they felt worry. Yeah, <coughs> you know, due to the barakah of her company uh, with uh, Ibra- of, of Ibrahim, you know, she was able to maintain that composure. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala not only rewarded her with <coughs> with Zamzam, <coughs> and you know, she had sole right to that uh, that well. He he rewarded her with um, a company. Like people came. Right, the Jurhumites came. They asked her, "Can we stay here?" She said, "Yes, but I, I, I have sole possession of the water, and you know she had a means of <coughs> trading with them, <coughs> with the water." And Ismail grew up, and you know, so you know, uh, Subhanallah. And you know, where are those moments of difficulty and what she was going through, and how many people historically have repeated the act, her act of desperation, but as an act of devotion? To Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, it really is significant, and you know, and this is it. You know, from this uh, came, you know, it, it, it was the root of you know the final religion that was meant for all humanity. Um, so uh, we will leave it here for now. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We hope you enjoyed it and benefited from it. Please take a moment to spread this benefit by sharing this podcast with your friends and family.